recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff. This is Triviality. Hello and welcome to Triviality, the game where a lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. My name is Neil. How are you, gentlemen? I'm here with Ken, Matt, and Jeff. Good evening. Ah, Dracula. Thank you for coming back. Mm -hmm. It's the it, the sun's down, so the sun is down. Ooh, it's a night episode. It is a night episode, which we, as we know, that means all bets are off. Yeah, no bets in this one. There is some bets going on under the Side table. Side bets. Yeah, yeah. So no, we can't taxes. do a bet because it's not like the four of us against each other. That's, That's how true. that works. Oh, that means we have a, a special guest. We do have special guests, and I guess that means that we can't be the Pete Rose of podcasting here and bet on our, ourselves to win <laughs> or lose. I would never bet on myself to lose well, or win. I don't know how this works. Would you bet on yourself for anything? No. No. What if there was a podcasting uh, thing in Vegas? Like you could bet on podcasts. To to to, to like do succeed what? or fail. <laughs> to succeed or fail, I guess. Yeah. Over under listens. You then could, no, you could game I would that not very bet easily. on that because there's plenty of podcasts out there that I'm like, why would anybody listen to this? That's true. Well, I mean, oh, you... name them. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. What would the what would the prop bets be though? Like mention of of Dutch boy, like someone's. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A pun, a really bad pun. Yeah, we're gonna have over under the return like, of whether or Dick not Gutley. <laughs> whether or not Neil does more than two minutes twenty seconds worth of impressions per episode. Yes, exactly. There's a lot of prop bets that we could have. Yes or no back tattoo. That's true. That'd be a really good. That'd be the, a good prop bet. No, but no, last thing I wanted to know. say though was uh, uh, according to Vegas, not really according to Vegas, but uh, I saw a. Notification we got today that we had reached number seven in the U.S. for podcasts about games. Oh, sports and games, yeah, sports and games. That's the highest we've ever been. Who, who's beating us? I don't know. Actually, we should look it up. But we've got numbers seven. one through six. Oh, <laughs> I've only seen us as high as like twenty three. So we've gotten up to seven for some reason. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, thanks yeah. to everyone who listens and tells their friends to listen and keeps listening over and over. And we have two of them here. And we do. Wow, not here, here, but okay, good. Well, we decided it's today room. it's a small room. We wanted to do a podcast uh, with an international flair. So we said we're only going to have guests on from different countries, you know, outside of the U.S. Because we've had enough people from the U.S. At too least much for, U.S. Too much U.S. Too much us, for that matter. For sure, there's a there's way too much us. Uh, on but this show. we have two special guests here. Our first special guest uh, coming to us all the way from Auckland, New Zealand, Savage Superstar on Patreon, Ryan Boyd. How are you, Ryan? I'm um, good, thanks. How are you guys? Doing, doing well and uh you told us today that you're recording i believe you're supposed to be working and you also are working from a bedroom with a frozen blanket behind you yeah yeah i'm in my daughter's bedroom she's at school so it's um not a nighttime episode where i am it's lunchtime now um but yeah so don't tell my boss that uh i'm doing this okay all right also don't tell them to listen okay <laughs> yes <laughs> I know, I know. Your daughter has the frozen uh, bedspread, but you also have one, right? In, in your room. Well, of course, it's yeah. it's you got to have matching. Yeah, it was buy one get one. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah so people... I gave, the, I got one for her as well. Yeah. And Ryan, Ryan, <laughs> Ryan got got Olaf. Uh, well, hey, Olaf, so you can't nothing uh, too bad to write home about. Uh, Ryan, you uh, have been on the show before, but can you remind folks what you do out there in Auckland? Uh, sure. So I work for a bank doing non-banking things. Um, I've got a wife and a couple of kids, a five-year-old and a six-month-old. Um, you might have heard our five-year-old sh on the show but quite regularly. She does um, some of the <laughs> Macho right. Man impersonations. Yeah, class. Um, yeah, that's basically our life is, yeah, taken up with uh, family, doing stuff. Uh, but thank you, Ryan, for joining us today. Uh, so happy to have you back. Our host today, who's going to be giving us the questions uh, he's coming to us from Scarborough uh, in uh, Ontario in Canada, which we're super excited about to have a different international listener here from a different side of the earth. He's an Oakland Five supporter on Patreon, and that is Mike Sforza. How are you, Mike? I'm um, good. How are you? Good. Well, did I say the name okay? Yep. That's that sounded fine to me. All right. I was internally combusting, <laughs> but uh, I'm, glad it, I'm glad I got right. <laughs> Can you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you have in store for us today? Well, I am a sales administrator for a music technology company. Um, I basically, it's a nice title, but I, I'm basically just fill the holes and where the company needs me. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jack of all trades. Yeah. And, uh, what are you doing out in Scarborough uh, in your free time? Uh, mostly gaming. <laughs> nice. But it's, what? uh, the COVID protocols up here were pretty strict. So stay yeah. inside for a while. A lot of hockey watching and maple tree 
uh, let's not talk about hockey image. right now. Oh, uh, I know. Sorry. Oh, with the Leafs, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Leafs. It was their year, I heard. But the Flames. Uh, the I don't flames. know who you're hearing it from because it's not Leaf fans. <laughs> and the Oilers are still in. So uh, speaking of games, um, is there one game you'd recommend right now that you've been loving that if people want to just check out a game? Um, well, I've been playing uh, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands because I'm a big fan of the Borderlands series. It's very funny that you should say that because I was going to be like, I hope he says Tiny Tina's because that's been played a lot in our house. It's like uh, Borderlands meets d d It's very yeah, funny. I've seen the trailer. Yeah, Will Arnett voices uh, someone in there and so does um, Detective Peralta. So. Ah. Andy Samberg. Andy Samberg. That's awesome. Well, yeah, well, I'll definitely have to check that out. And then also speaking of games, Ryan, uh, we were talking about this before we started recording. We all love uh, footy here, obviously. We have a lot of Australian listeners. We were just kind of debating. We know that New Zealand is big on rugby uh, and soccer or football, but does anyone there actually care about footy since you're so close or not really? Uh, what do you mean when you say footy? Australian. There, exactly. There's the answer. Yeah, Australian rules football. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no one cares about that. Okay, that's what see, I figured. See? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. New Zealand's got to be the rugby, right? Yeah, it's it's all rugby, cricket, bit rugby of bit cricket. of soccer. Yep. Yeah. Well, the All Blacks. Speaking of sports, mm-hmm. Matt is going to be teaming up with Ryan. Yeah, to and uh, with some of that North American sports trivia. Yeah, what's your teammate, Matt? Uh, well, he is a Kiwi. I like sports. We kept it simple. We're Kiwi sports. All right, and you have your little handheld controller ready to go. Yeah. To buzz in. And uh, Jeff and I are going to team up, and we we were just talking about those uh, kids' toys that roll around on the floor, and uh, they're shaped like a sea mine. Mm-hmm. Bumble ball. So we're going to be the bumble balls. Oh, uh, sorry about that. Yeah. So, uh, Mike, uh, you are hosting today. You get the choice. Uh, any particular rules, Reed, you would like to hear? Um, you still have the uh, Chris Hansen one, right? I haven't heard that one in a while. Oh, yeah. yeah. Have a seat. Have Listen. a seat, guys. Chris Hansen here. Triviality Podcast is two rounds of 20 questions worth 10 points apiece. At halftime, there's a special swing round by this week's host. In the final round, players wager points they've earned for a chance to become the cream of the crop. Stand by, and I'll be watching. I am the cream. There it was. There it was. Uh, Make sure you throw away your McDonald's bags of paraphernalia (laughs) and... You know, get... I was just here to talk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Oops. Mike, uh, feel free to take it away. Question one, carbon dating. There are over 300 types of gemstones, but only one is made of just one element. What what gemstone is it? I'm That's cool it. with that. All right. We're locking in uh, Jeff and I in the studio. Ooh, locking in quick. Ryan, what's your favorite gemstone? <laughs> <laughs> the righteous um, kind. Well, um, my first one was diamond being crushed to carbon uh, would that's that be c- carbon dating that makes a lot of sense yeah i'm just trying so... to all my gem knowledge comes from the uncut kind plus plus if your uh, dating is successful you may give a diamond mm. Mm. well yes. that just makes or too receive. much sense yeah. you know or receive. I've, well, you know 2022 you can do whatever you want um and i heard millennials are not buying diamonds it's a real problem because we're poor oh, <laughs> too much avocado can't toast. buy houses can't buy diamonds can't buy cars Buy Why NFTs. are millennials killing the diamond industry? <laughs> diamonds. I can't even because afford it's an a emerald. Cartel. Well, <laughs> my dad bought a house for fifteen thousand dollars. Why can't you buy a house, millennial? Uh, diamonds are a girl's best friend. We're gonna hope they're our best friend, and we're gonna say diamonds. Yeah, we're hoping that uh, this answer is forever. We two said diamonds, <laughs> and that would be correct. Diamonds right. are made right. only of carbon. Okay. Uh, question two. Sigh of relief. Mike Marshall won it in 1974. Eric Gagne won it in 2003. These men were the first and most recent players at their position to win this award. What award is it? We can we can lock in if you're okay, Ryan, with that. Okay. So you wrote uh, Cy Young, Patrick you Roy, re- relief pitcher. Yeah, possibly. I mean, he did write. He did say sigh of relief. So oh, Cy Young. Okay. I, I picked up on the relief, and you picked up on the sigh. So, sure. We'll say the Cy Young Award. Uh, yeah, Eric Gagne had an ERA of like under one that year. It was like ridiculous. He gave up no runs, uh, 50 plus saves, etc. That's I'm pretty good. Pretty sure that it's the Cy Young. And that would be correct. It was the Cy Young. Eric Gagne had 55 saves that year. Yeah, that's a lot of saves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mike Marshall pitched in over 100 games no. when he Put won the work. Cy Young, which is insane. Wow. Earning that paycheck. Question three. 
Flex Your Jazz Biceps. This jazz legend was the band leader slash narrator in the 1956 musical High Society. He appears throughout the film, sings the title song, and performs a duet with Bing Crosby called Now You Has Jazz. Who am I talking about? I just watched this like two months ago. Of, of course, of course you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like on HBO Max. I'm like, oh, Frank Sinatra, Bing Crosby. I'll give it a play. This guy. Yeah. This jazz legend. <laughs> I think I... I think I'm good with the first one, yeah. All right, we're going to go ahead and lock in here. All right. Do you have any ideas, Ryan? Not really. No. Uh, it's not okay, really mine. Well, Ryan doesn't has jazz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, usually the only jazz legends I know are Carl Malone and John Stockton. But <laughs> he did say flexing your jazz bicep, which would make your arm strong. And then I would uh, think that that would possibly be Louis Armstrong. Uh, very good, yes. You're you're getting the clues where we're just like missing the clues, <laughs> but luckily we also said Louis Armstrong. Yeah, uh, Matt nailed the clue right on the head. It was uh, Louis Armstrong. I'm much better at night. We should play all our games at night. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Good job. Yeah. So High Society is actually uh, sort of a musical uh, rendition of Philadelphia Story. So it's basically the same story. Mm. Mm-hmm. I thought it was uh, like Pineapple Express. <laughs> High Society. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Well, maybe when they I, should uh, remake it. Is that? When I wrote the question, I didn't realize how hard it was going to say to say now you has jazz. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you have to properly say it, but like now you has jazz. Oh, wow, <laughs> that was pretty good. Thank Not you. bad. Thank you. Question four: Eugene, I Gene, we all Gene. From Mickey Mouse to Winnie the Pooh, Disney has many iconic characters. But which human Disney character's name is actually Eugene Fitzherbert? Ryan should be in good position there with that bedroom. <laughs> scour it for clues maybe there's a uh, what do they call those things fat heads like the big posters oh, yeah. on your wall of, uh, eugene. of eugene <laughs> i just imagine that prince charming was actually named eugene fitzherbert yeah i would go by prince charming then too if i could <laughs> okay we are gonna lock in with a guess because we don't really have a good idea here but we picked a human cartoon character all right ryan so we're thinking of a Probably human character who has a nickname. Mm. Can you think of anything? Um, yeah. Maybe this is um, Captain Hook, you think? I thought his name was Hook. No, his name is, he's <laughs> Captain Hook. Eugene he has, has a, hook. a Hook. Eugene Fitzherbert Hook. <laughs> It'd be crazy if his name was Hook and he had a Hook. Yeah. Yeah. Like my name, my full name is actually Matthew James Podcaster. (laughs) (laughs) It's really weird. I became a podcast. (laughs) You want to just lock in with Captain Hook? Sure. Okay. Captain Hook is uh, James Hook, I believe. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went with his uh, compatriot, Smee. Now, I think if you're a fan of Breaking Bad, that uh, Walt Jr. has a lot in common with this character. Well, the answer is Flynn Rider from Tangled. Oh, oh yeah. Yep. yep. There it is. I love Tangled. It's a great movie. Uh, it's my favorite 3D Disney movie. <laughs> Very underrated. Okay, question five. Presidential privates. There are 31 presidents who were once enlisted in the army. Of these presidents, only one did not become a commissioned officer. The president before him was a brigadier general in the mexican-american war and the president after him was a captain in the illinois militia during the black hawk war who was he yeah because the thing is the one before i'm not 100 percent sure of now two before timeline makes sense well and it also fits with the the one after i think so that's why i'm basing it on that answer yes and for those reasons we're in (laughs) for those vague reasons i think we're looking for a president somewhere in the 1840s, 50s, or 60s. I um, think you're spot on with that. So. Yeah. Good start. That's where we guessed. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Um, and I, because I think that the president in the Illinois militia was Lincoln, which would, and then before that. That's I, Buchanan. That's so, and my guess was Buchanan. That's who I was thinking of. We're all shocked you know here that? at your, <laughs> your presidential knowledge. Uh, <laughs> what? They come up, I, yeah, they come up in trivia over here too. Yes, I, I remember them. But if you're good with Buchanan, we can lock in with Buchanan. Cool. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, I knew for sure. Um, let's see. Uh, it was uh, Fillmore. 
Pierce. Well, Fillmore, yeah. But before Fillmore, um, that guy was definitely in the Mexican-American War. Older guy, number 12, can't remember. Anyways, uh, we want James Buchanan. My go-to answer um, for any U.S. president question, James Buchanan. <laughs> is it Taylor before? Um... Uh, yeah, Washington, Adam Jefferson, Madison Monroe, Adam Strikes, yes, Baron Harrison, Taylor. Tyler, Pope, Taylor. Yeah, Taylor. James Buchanan was a private in the defense of Baltimore during the War of 1812. Oh. Oh, wow. When was that war? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> It's also know. uh 1812 to 1814. Okay. Uh, I think. <laughs> well, so look, sorry, you go ahead. No, I was going to say. You're the score man. After uh score man. five questions, both teams Kiwi Sports and Bumble Balls, uh both only missing one question, so we're tied at 40. Neil E scorekeeper. <laughs> okay. Um question 6, goalie goal. Starting from 1982, which trophy is given to the goalies who played for the team that gave up the least amount of goals in the NHL? It was named after the president of the New York Rangers from 1962 to 1980. You're on your own, Matt. I know. And I, we're going to lock in. I have, a, I have a name of a trophy, and it might be this one. Okay, so you're thinking about hockey goaltender-specific awards. Yeah, so um, the the award for the best goalie, which I think is voted on, is the Vesna. I don't know the least amount of goals award, but we could just go with Vesna. Okay. So I don't know any others. Yeah. And the other awards I can think of are for like other offensive stuff. and defensive yeah. players. Mm-hmm. So Vesna. Yeah, I think there's a Bing trophy at some point too. Uh the only one I knew that was goalie related was the Vesna, so we said Vesna. Uh well if it was prior to nineteen eighty two, it would have been the Vesna, but they changed it up when they created the William M. Jennings Trophy. Okay. Oh. Mm. Uh, I need to get some hockey knowledge on here. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I didn't well, know we that. We did knowledge things. Uh-huh. Got as far as Vesna. Okay, question seven. Seasonal shakeup. When I say seasonal food product, the first thing that comes to mind is probably pumpkin spice lattes. But what McDonald's seasonal menu item was introduced in 1970 in Chicago and has been milked ever since? Yeah, we're locked in. Um, Ryan, what do you know about Mecca's? Um, I know that we have different menus to you, so that could be a, a problem. Um, <laughs> we have something called a, a McFlurry or something like that. That's the uh, only sort of thing I can think of. I don't know if you have that. We do, but it's not seasonal unless, oh, okay. well, except for the season of the ice cream machine not working, which is all <laughs> of the season. Actual conspiracy theory. Yeah. Yeah. Look into it. Um, I don't think we have seasonal items on our... The only one I could think of is the McRib, which is a very popular, um, disgusting sandwich. It's sporadically (laughs) seasonal. Yeah. It has to be called the McRib because there's nothing rib-related in it. No, it it is some sort of (laughs) pork-related product with artificial ribs. Yeah. Are you good with McRib? Sure. I believe (laughs) believe it's pieces of pork organ with uh, some rubber band slices. (laughs) (laughs) Um, well, we think uh, Chicago really goes for it every year when they dye the river green. We're going Shamrock Shake. It is the Shamrock yeah. Shake. Come on, Matt. They milked it. I know. Do you guys get Shamrock Shakes in New Zealand? Nope. Uh, heard of it. You are. It is a green vanilla milkshake. <laughs> Chicago is, of course, it's now the some mint in it. A little yeah. current <laughs> corporate world headquarters for McDonald's. So. Right. They are. Up I'm to... surprised you didn't get that having uh, raced in the Shamrock Shuffle. Yeah. A lot of problems over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get the next one. Uh, do you guys get the McLobster? Or is that a Canadian thing? Hell no. McLobster? No. no. Oh, I would. Yuck. Is it alive? <laughs> if it's Canadian, it's probably like actual food. <laughs> you p- you pick your lobster out of the tank up front. <laughs> no. Uh, they deep fry in front. And then you watch you Ronald McDonald scream burn in the it. back. Yeah. Now, I worked at McDonald's, and the McLobster, what they gave us was a little plastic package that had little bits of lobster in it. And you'd throw it on the bun, throw it in the microwave, and then. Uh, put the rest of the toffees on top. Sounds nice. appealing. Oh, no. It's fast food lobster. I don't know what you're expecting. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> the bar should be very low for that one. Okay. Uh, question eight. Gotta download them all. According to the official Pokemon website, there are 17 official Pokemon apps. One of those apps is a gotcha game where you can get important characters from the games, such as gym leaders, elite four members, and rival characters. What is this app that shares its name with Ash's goal in the anime? That's my guess based on what his goal was. Okay. 
Sorry, man. I know nothing about Pokemon. Oh, that's okay. I know a lot about Pokemon. <laughs> um, so the, and how they go, go, go. Yeah, the 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 tagline has got to catch them all. But I believe his goal that he states in the first episode is that he wants to be a Pokemon King of pirates. Oh no, wait. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that's different. That's, that's a different one. Is that One Piece? Yeah. 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 He wants to be a Pokemon master, and I think Pokemon master would be a good name for an app. So I think that's what we're going to lock in with, Pokemon Master. We also said Pokemon Master. And the app is called Pokemon Masters. I, so bang on. We know our Pokemon. This is the right demographic. <laughs> <laughs> we need the clearly Triviality a, Master app. Clearly a bunch of weebs in this, uh, this recording. And, and right? I, it wasn't even me. <laughs> <laughs> Go with the next one. Okay, uh, question nine, Burning Coal. Born Nathan Birnbaum, which comedian reportedly got his name from a nickname his brother gave him and the coal company he would steal coal from as a youth? Try not to mix him up with the MLB player who won the 1926 AL MVP. Oh, I could see him stealing coal. (laughs) He's an immoral man, (laughs) after all. I don't think we're going to get it. I'm fine going with that. All right, we're locked in with a guess. And in fact, I feel like I've seen that on a train. Okay. All right. So we're locked in with an educated guess. <laughs> Potentially educated. I said Jimmy Fox is a joke because he was a baseball player in the 20s who won an AL MVP. But Jamie Fox is a comedian whose name sounds very similar to Jimmy Fox. He doesn't really strike me as a burn bomb. But... I know. that's <laughs> 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 Jamie Fox, I'm pretty sure, is a fake name. It is, yeah. So if we got nothing else, I'm I guess we could just lock in with Jamie Foxx. Sure. Go for it. Pretty sure I got my letters mixed up, but uh we went with Louis CK. So that's probably a nickname. Uh unfortunately no correct answers here. The uh, answer was George Burns. Oh, oh George uh, Burns. Oh. Yeah. Well He was more of a coal thieving generation too, you know. <laughs> yeah. The coal company was the Burns Brothers Coal Company. Uh, question 10. Newsworthy life. Who has their baby photo in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, became a model at the age of 10, interned at the CIA, and hosted the reality show The Mole? We're locked in. It was Ken, actually. I loved <laughs> The Mole when it first came out. Uh, I've never seen The Mole. I don't think we got that here. Um, you didn't so I don't know that. Great trash TV. Yeah, so other Ooh. than that... Who is the mole? No. Rosie O'Donnell? No, Stephen Baldwin. Oh, that's right. That makes sense. <laughs> oh boy, I got, I got. The only thing I could think of is that this person is was probably in their forties in the early two thousands. Was a child of a celebrity or somebody famous? Yeah, yeah. I was thinking more like a down a level, like a Jenny McCarthy sort of level. Oh, Jenny McCarthy is a good one. I like Jenny McCarthy. Some of her views, not as much. But you know what? Mm-hmm. I like Jenny McCarthy. And I, I think we'll lock in with that. Are we on the same page with uh, Anderson Cooper? Yeah. Anderson Cooper. Who I believe uh, was very well connected since his grandmother was a Vanderbilt. Yeah. And so was his mother. And uh, that's correct. That always correct. helps. Yeah. It always and- helps to be related to the Vanderbilts. <laughs> Anderson Cooper was correct. So, after the first round, uh, we finally have a lead change here. It looks like Team Kiwi Sports uh, is at 50. They uh, were batting 50% in the first round. And Bumble Balls is at 70. Wow. So, uh, we mentioned it at the top that uh, Ryan and Mike are both Patreon supporters. So, if you'd like to join them in, in supporting the show and helping us continue to grow, you can go to patreon.com slash trivialitypodcast uh, for just a bunch of great perks, uh, including um, some live games uh, that you've been doing, Matt, uh, as well as uh, a recent game that uh, we posted, which was a live stream that we did that uh, was a pay-to-see uh, uh, live stream, but we made it available for all our, all our patrons uh, for free. Uh, what else, Jeff? Neil, I mean, what can I say? We have excellent bonus episodes that come out twice a month. Uh, one is trivia-focused. One is more of an AMA. Both are great um, Love so, the crop drops. Yeah, and those can be yours for uh, as little as uh, five dollars a month and up. But yeah, any amount of support that you can pledge to our show greatly helps, and uh, we appreciate everyone who can uh, support us financially and does. 
Yes, thank you, everyone. Uh, we're on our road to 500 patrons. So if you'd like to join, go to patreon.com slash trivialitypodcast. And if you're not uh, in a position to help us monetarily right now, just rate and review the show. That would help us out a ton. And tell a friend. And tell a friend. All right, what's the swing round today? Okay, so the swing round is, uh, I'm calling it the Warren Dingus Swing Round. So I'm going to give you a short description, and you just need to give me a two-word answer that fits the description. The catch is that the two words have to be anagrams of each other. Okay, so if I were to say, forcefully request an EA Sports football game, six letters. Demand, Demand Madden. Madden. Yep. Uh, okay, number one. Fight between an iPad and an Amazon Fire HD 10, six letters. Number two, expulsion of gas on an inflatable boat, four letters. Number three, frozen gambling cubes, four letters. Number four, a valuable collection of election participants, five letters. Number six, a traditional beer mug that has been inserted into something, five letters. Number six, learning that has been sold to the highest bidder, nine letters. Number seven, thin triviality host, four letters. Number eight, refuses to take notice of certain areas, seven letters. Number nine, ripping apart an igneous rock used in counters and pavement, seven letters. And number 10, dog had a short cry of pain in a profound way. Six letters. All right, we'll consider these and we'll be right back. And we are back with our answers. These were a lot of fun. I think we got about eight of them, but uh, we'll see. Let's get the questions one more time and we'll let you know. Okay, uh, the first one. Fight between an iPad and an Amazon Fire HD 10. Six letters. Uh, we're starting off with the Battle Tablet. We also had Battle Tablet. Uh, I had tablet battle, but I will accept battle tablet. <laughs> uh, the second one, expulsion of gas on an inflatable boat, four letters. Fart raft, which is a lot funnier than raft fart, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the best way to make your raft go faster in any cartoon. It's the raft fart. Uh, that would be raft fart. I, again, as long as you have the two words, I will accept both. <laughs> Number three, frozen gambling cubes, four letters. We have iced dice. Which is my how poke. my mage likes to cast spells. Mm. <laughs> Very good. We also had iced dice. If you uh, keep rolling snake guys, you probably have iced dice. <laughs> They're too cool. Uh, number four, a valuable collection of election participants. We have voter trove. Uh, yeah, this was all Ryan. I had no idea, but we said voter trove. Yeah, I thought this was the hardest one, but you both got it right. Voter trove. Number five, a traditional beer mug that has been inserted into something. Damn it if it's not Stein something, but we can't figure out the second word. We, we just said uh, it was a Stein set in. Set in Stein. Oh, you're so close. You're so close. Yeah, Matt got the Stein, and then uh, I got it in set. It is in set Stein. In set. Uh. Okay. Uh, number six. Learning that has been sold to the highest bidder. Nine letters. Auctioned education. Uh, we said education auctioned. And it was auctioned education. Both correct. Number seven. Thin triviality host. That's a lean kneel. Yeah, that was uh, possibly the easiest one of the bunch. But, uh, yep, we also said lean kneel. You heard that right. Neil's the easiest one in the bunch. Uh, <laughs> to anagram. <laughs> yeah. Possibly uh, in other ways. Yeah. <laughs> and the Neil lean is what he does at the clubs. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> when everyone's leaning back, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm doing the Neil lean. Uh number oh, number eight. Refuses to take notice of certain areas, seven letters. Pretty sure one of these is ignores, but we couldn't unscramble it. So we just got ignores. Gin Rose. <laughs> mm, we were ignores regions and it is ignores regions very good number nine ripping apart an igneous rock used in counters and pavement we had tearing tearing granite which is the name of ken and my new metal band <laughs> yes yes um this one took us a few minutes but we also got tearing granite and it's tearing granite 
Number 10, dog had a short cry of pain in a profound way. Six letters. Yelped deeply. Mm -hmm. We also said yelped deeply. And so did we as you swept that swing around. <laughs> yeah, it was yelped deeply. Originally, my uh, clue here was dog had a short crime of pain in a bass voice, but I'm not sure if that would have tripped people up. <laughs> <laughs> After the swing round, it looks like Team Kiwi Sports is uh, picking up 50, not missing a question in the swing round, bringing their total to 100, and Team Bumble Balls picking up 40, giving them a slight lead with 110. Hey, round two, question one, personal personas. In the video game Persona 5, the main character fights using their persona, who is based on the character Arsène Lupin. This gentleman thief was created in 1905 by what French author? As far as I can tell, even though the author had a cast of friends, he did he did the spin-off. See, I'm the only one here who watches Lupin I know. or Lupin, and everyone's uh, ignoring me here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yep. All I, right. I think you're right. We're, we're locked in. Well, the spin-off was Joey. Joey, yeah. Tribbiani. Um, is it LeBlanc? Is that something? Do you, so do you think that this could be, we could go with LeBlanc and hope that that's the name of an author? It it's sounds French. French-ish, yeah. So. It's quite French. So we are going to go with the French LeBlanc. We too said the white. <laughs> or LeBlanc. And the correct answer is Maurice LeBlanc. All right. Yeah. Uh, Arsène Lupin, obviously the famous gentleman thief, but uh, Maurice LeBlanc actually wrote him meeting Sherlock Holmes. But after some uh, legal issues with Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, he had to change the name. So he changed it to Herlock Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Classic. That was how I thought I got away with everything in yeah. third grade. Gotcha. Okay, uh, round two, question two. Two's company. What company, which has been based in Springfield, Massachusetts since 1852, has decided to move their headquarters to Maryville, Tennessee in 2023 due to a proposed legislation? According to the company's website, one of the key factors of the move to Tennessee is support for the Second Amendment. All right, I think we have somewhat of an idea, so we're going to lock in here. I have no idea. Do you have any idea? No, I got. I don't know anything. Um, what are some gun companies? You big gun yeah. guy? Oh yeah, I'm a big but, gun guy. You know, <laughs> not, not New Zealand. <laughs> Nerf gun, right? Uh, yeah, no. Um, we don't. We don't do that over here. Um, no, they have responsible yeah. legislation. Can they? Yeah, hunt. What we do have hunt? hunting, hunting guns, but not like automatic things. Or no, like that. Ryan hunts with his bare hands. No. You got to pack it like through the end of the thing. like a. He's got the right to bare arms muscle. under the Second Amendment. Bare arms, bare hands. It's all the same. I have no idea. Uh, do you think it could be the Bass Pro Shop? They sell a lot of guns. Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> I, was, I, don't, I don't know. It was like where would – what's sporting – I'm thinking of a sporting goods store that would – have a lot of that would sell a lot of guns something with like two people in their name or something well that i mean two so names. like smith and wesson is a gun manufacturer and there's two of them smith and wesson smith couldn't have done it without wesson so he says we don't know i don't wesson, know them. wesson was just the money guy okay I don't know anything about this company. <laughs> Regardless, do you do you want to do you feel better with that? Does that sound more likely? Uh, I honestly have no clue. So, um, do you think this is Duck just... Dynasty? Oh, they've been around since that long. Um, let's let's say Smith and Wesson. Yeah, based on the um, twos company category, we also said Smith and Wesson, though we did also consider Winchester. Uh, it is Smith and Wesson. Yeah. Right. Interesting that you bring up Winchester, though, because while they say they're founded in 1852, that was the first version of the company, which became the Winchester's uh, gun company. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. Well, you can learn more by watching Supernatural. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, question three. Fictional dicks. Created by Edward Stratemeyer, brothers Frank and Joe made their debut in 1927. Their adventures were written by several ghostwriters under the pseudonym of Franklin W. Dixon. 
The book series was so popular, a female counterpart by the name of Nancy was created. What book series am I talking about? And I want to be clear that I'm talking about the book series with Frank and Joe. Okay. We think we know this in the studio, so we'll go ahead and lock in. All right, Ryan, what do you know about these boys? Is this the hottie boys? I think I always thought their counterpart w- was Lita, but I guess it was Nancy at the time. So I <laughs> this isn't the boxcar children. <laughs> no, I think I I, I think there's a lot of. Those. I'm pretty sure it's Hardy Boys. So we will lock in with the Hardy Boys. Yeah, I'm a bigger fan of Tom, but we said the Hardy Boys, <laughs> and the answer is Hardy Boys. Of course, Nancy being Nancy Drew. I hear they're getting rebooted with a Z on the end of boys, and they wear chains on their jeans. Hardy Boys to yeah. men. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good before and after. You got to remember that one. Mm-hmm. Okay, question four. This question is brought to you by Parade Raptor Legends. When the Toronto Raptors won the NBA championship in 2019, their victory parade lasted over five hours. During the parade, Kyle Lowry could be seen wearing the jersey of the Raptors' first ever draft pick. That pick was the 1995 1996 Rookie of the Year and is currently an assistant coach with the Boston Celtics. Whose jersey was he wearing? It's not Drake, right? Locked in. Yeah, I figured. Oh, Matt's locked in this time. No, Drake currently Didn't plays Duke Raptors. Me. You cool with that, Ryan? Oh, do you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember the 95 draft? I was a big fan. Yeah, he just usurped you. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, do you have any idea whatsoever? Vince Carter? Sure. Cool. I love Vince Carter, whoever that is. Air Canada, drafted in 1998. Damn uh it. I'm almost. I knew he played for the Raptors. He did play for the Raptors <sighs> until he was he forced his way out to yeah, New Jersey. He... <laughs> uh, I'm pretty pretty sure that he was wearing a Damon Stoudemire jersey. So we said Damon uh, Stoudemire. The answer is Damon Stoudemire. In a weird yeah. twist of fate, Very Damon good. Stoudemire was traded from the uh, Raptors for a package that included Gary Trent, whose son is now currently playing for the Toronto Raptors. All right, Gary yeah. Trent Jr. <laughs> That's how you know you're old is when the sons of players you liked as a kid are now also in the league. Yeah. <laughs> like Gary Payton the third. Yeah, really. Uh, remember when Gary Payton the first was in the league? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here's the third. Oh, okay. Uh, question five. Losing pounds. What imperial unit is equivalent to 14 pounds? When the United States derived their measurements and weights from the British imperial units at the time, this unit was never brought over. We are locked in. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, it's a stone. No. Oh, that yeah. sounds right. I once knew how much stone I weighed, and then I I lost track. So, I I think I think stone's a great answer. We're gonna lock in with stone. Yeah, I usually cop, stop counting after sixteen stone. So uh, we said stone. And the correct answer is a stone. All right. Let's get a score recap from Neil E. Scorekeeper. Uh, well, it looks like uh, Team Bumble Balls picking up 40 points, bringing their total to 150. And Team uh, Kiwi Sports uh, betting perfect, picking up an extra 50, tying Bumble Balls also with 150. Uh, how dare you? Shout out Damon Stoudemire. Okay. Uh, question six, actors' egos. This superhero alter ego was created by taking the first names of two actors. One of those actors was known as the King of Hollywood, and the other appeared in more than 110 films. What is the alter ego? Jeff wrote something down very quickly, and I like it, so we're going to go with it. What are you thinking? Um, Poor Peter Parker. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have any ideas yet, no. Um, okay, so my first, Jay, my first guess Jonah. was... Clark Kent, Clark being Clark Gable, and Kent being Kent Movie Man. I don't know. Kent <laughs> pronounced moving, Movie Man. <laughs> um, that was something I thought of. I'm trying to think of other, because I don't think it'd be like a Bruce Wayne. Yeah, I'm happy to go with Clark Kent. I think that's... Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll go with the classic, put your glasses on and say Clark Kent. Yeah, we yeah. did a quick change in a phone booth. We said Clark Kent. Well, named after Bruce Campbell and Wayne Brady. No, k- kidding. <laughs> uh, named after Clark Gable and Kent Taylor. It's Clark Kent. Good polls. I thought you were going to say, no, Neil, uh, Neil, who John is Wayne? Kent Taylor? I actually don't know. 
And you call yourself a Hollywood film buff. He was in over 110 <laughs> films. Uh, very much a B-list actor. Uh, and you call yourself he just worked, a Hollywood He yeah. just worked a lot. <laughs> he worked quite a bit. Yeah, I, He I'm was the Rob Schneider of his time. I will <laughs> deep dive on... Uh... Rob Schneider's got another 75 films to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get the next one here. Question seven. To be frank... When Frank Sinatra died, he was buried with a pack of Camel cigarettes, a Zippo lighter, a dollar worth of dimes, and a bottle of what? Just a reminder that this is question number seven of the second round. All right. Um, we will lock in unconfidently, but uh, locked in nonetheless. Mm. All right, Ryan. Any ideas? Um, no, I don't get the clue on this one, unfortunately. Okay, so it's question seven. I think old Frankie Blue Eyes was a seven and seven man. The seven being seven up and the other seven being Seagram's gin, Seagram's seven. Uh, So we will lock in with Seagram's gin. We also locked in with Seagram's. Oh, you're forgetting uh, the branding on there. There's a a type of liquor that is uh, Sinatra Select after his love of this liquor, and you'd always have it when he sang on stage. Be Jack Daniels. Daniels. It is Jack Daniels. Okay. Good to know. There are two liquors with a seven. How dare they? <laughs> oh, is it Tennessee whiskey number seven? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Crap. Whoops. <laughs> okay. Question eight. Sight for sore eyes. In early 2017, a Dutch ophthalmologist studied 92 films featuring a comedic duo. The ophthalmologist concluded that they probably suffered 88 eye injuries across their career, with one of the comedian's finger being the most common cause and his fist being the second most common. Who is this cuckoo comedic duo? All right, we will go ahead and lock in. We're not positive, but we think we're on to something. Oh, boy. Um, Comedic duos, a lot of eye stuff. What are you thinking? I was just trying to think of comedic duos and... Came and down a lot. Abbott and Costello and, I don't know. Um, Chich and Chong. Well, I think yeah. the only thing is the Marx Brothers, Groucho and other <coughs> Marx, whose name I can never remember. Harper. Uh, Harper. 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 I know. <laughs> Harper <laughs> Marx. <laughs> he's, but, from, he's from Laguna Beach. But, <laughs> hey, guys, I'm with, I'm with Groucho. <laughs> <man>. Harper <laughs> Marx. Uh, Meet you at Abercrombie. Bruno, But right? they were... Bruno Marx. They were... <laughs> Carl, he's coming along. They had glasses though, so they wouldn't be, they wouldn't do the eye stuff. There was at least three of them in every film. Um, oh. Do you want? I mean, all I could think of is who were. It's got maybe Abbott and Costello. Maybe they did more physical comedy than we thought. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna do Abbott and or Costello. Yeah, uh, we were thinking about the Three Stooges as well, but obviously they're a trio, so we went with Abbott and Costello. Well, that's you're both incorrect. The cuckoo was the hint there, as their theme song is known as the cuckoo song, cuckoo or dance of the cuckoos. This is Laurel and Hardy. Um, oh, Laurel and Hardy. There was infli- another duo. They were inflicting pain. I don't know. I've never seen uh, any of those. One of my movies. favorite parts about the study is their the conclusion they came up with, which they ended with. The findings of the present study might reflect the personality, character, and intellectual cap- capacity of both Laurel and Hardy as two minds without a single thought. <laughs> it's like our podcast. That's our new review on minds. iTunes. Yeah. Someone got paid to do that study, I'm pretty sure. Okay, question nine. Don't punt this question. Ponte Vecchio, Pont du Gard, and Cio Sepol are all names of what? If I named a fourth one, they could play a card game. Let's say, let's, I have no idea on this one, Jeff, so let's just say they're the four suits in Italian. Mm. So you guys are you live. You have your wedding suit? The one you're buried in? No, the, like, cards. Oh. Jeff. Yes, uh, we're, yeah. locked, we're locked in. I wanted to so see honestly, go with that. <laughs> if you could my go idea, more. my idea was suits. Because you would think if you had four suits, you need four suits to play a game. And uh, that makes sense to me. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, that makes absolute sense. I was on the same track with uh, cards. I was going through, are they kings or queens or... um, Yeah, jokers. (laughs) Yeah. But uh, yeah, I like suits more. So, So we will say suits. My experience tells me that you just need four jokers to play the game known as triviality. Uh, 
Uh, so the correct answer is actually bridges. Oh. Um, mm. The Ponte Vecchio the is in uh, yes. Florence. I've actually been there. It's beautiful and very expensive. The Pont du Gard is in Rome. And the Cio Sepul is an Iranian dr bridge. Hmm, cool. And question 10. A good lick. In 2007, Canada issued four 52-cent commemorative stamps honoring Canadian recording artists. These stamps featured Paul Anka, Joni Mitchell, Anne Murray, and a Canadian folk legend, who, in March of 2020, released his 21st studio album, Solo, 54 years after his debut album. Who is this man? My, my thought is not a great one, so... I didn't put Chad Kroger on a stamp. I don't know if this person's old enough either. From Kentucky. Oh. And then more bluegrass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I don't know. Uh, you, you, we are come up with an answer. Tapping out. Okay. Um, so my Canadian folk knowledge begins and ends with Rick Astley. I don't even think he's Canadian. Irish. Irish. I was so close. Um... Alvaro Conno. What? My biggest thought was um, Neil Young. Yeah, the Southern man didn't need Neil Young. He's not Young. And he must be from the North then. So that would make sense to me. Uh, I'm not I'm, 100% sure he's Canadian, but... Well, he's an honorary um, Canadian. Because I was thinking that Simon Garfunkel era, they added Neil Young at some point, didn't they? Wasn't there? A... And there was Wood, um, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Um, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Yeah, let's let's go with Neil Young. That sounds good. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you guys are right. We uh, we just had to tap out on this one because we were blanking. He was born in Toronto, so. Yeah, Neil Young was Canadian, but the answer I was looking for is Gordon Lightfoot. Oh, oh. oh the wreck of our scores, Ken. Yep. Gordon Lightfoot. Uh, Speaking of, Neil, why don't you creep around our back stairs and tell us what the points are going into the final. I hope that was a reference. To Gordon Lightfoot, yes. <laughs> nice reference there. You pulled out. Uh, well, it looks like uh, we're going to be tied going into the final. Uh, both teams only picking up 20 points in the second half of the second round. So the scores are 170 going into the final round. And just a quick note, uh, Rick Astley uh, is from Lancashire, England, so he's actually English. So okay. uh, thank, you, score. thank you for that note. Yeah. Uh, the final round's going to be a little bit different than what you're used to. You're only going to make four wagers, as the fifth question is going to be a sort of a bonus question that will, will be worth 30 points. Okay. So you have music movie mashup equivalent to Babe Ruth, Oscar minor winner, and second number one for two. All right, the wagers are now in, so let's go ahead and hear the questions. Okay, music movie mashup. This is a before or after. The village people sing about how masculine Woody Allen is in this 1979 film where he dates Mariel Hemingway after Meryl Streep leaves him for a woman. Okay, equivalent to Babe Ruth. The New York Times named Babe Ruth and a racehorse as the leading leaders in sports in 1920. Arguably the greatest racehorse of all time, this racehorse won 20 of the 21 races he was entered in. Who is this racehorse that shares his name with a jellyfish and a combat ship? Oscar Minor Winner. This composer has been nominated for 22 Oscars, but has only won two, winning the Oscar for Best Original Song for a 2001 Disney movie and a 2011 Disney movie. I was shocked to find out he didn't win an Oscar for a 1995 Disney movie. The voters must have been uncultured swine. Who is this composer? Second number one for two. Jason Derulo and Josh685 released a song in 2020, which was then remixed by BTS. The remix made it to number one on the Billboard Top 100, making it the second number one hit for both BTS and Jason Derulo. Name that song. Jason Derulo. I I can take a stab. Okay. Maybe. And the final question? Uh, okay. The final question, this bonus question, uh, category, a theme is a twist your host makes. Surprise! This was a theme quiz the entire time. So this is, if you've, uh, 
listen to the podcast foreplay. This is going to play a little bit like that. So if you split the first round into groups of five, so question one to five, there's something in common with all the answers there. Same with questions six through 10 in round one. Same with question one to five in round two and questions six to 10 in round two. If you find the commonality hidden in all the answers, all four, they will point to a bigger theme. Oh, I should have said, uh, I'm gonna take Five points for each commonality, and then uh, 10 points for the overall theme. Okay, we'll consider these, and we'll be right back. All right, you guys are ready. We're ready. Everybody's ready. Let's get the uh, questions one more time and give our answers. Okay, music movie mashup. The village people sing about how masculine Woody Allen is in this 1979 film where he dates Mariel Hemingway after Meryl Streep leaves him for a woman. For 30 points, we said Macho Macho Manhattan. Uh, we wagered 30, and Ryan, you came up with this one. What did we say? Yeah, we, we got uh, Macho Manhattan as well. And it was Macho Manhattan. Equivalent to Babe Ruth. The New York Times named Babe Ruth and a racehorse. Who was the racehorse? Fortunately, wagering zero on this one, because we knew it, was Man o War. Yeah, we wagered 20, and I believe this is the guy that sired War Emblem, who also won a Kentucky Derby. But I might be wrong. We said Man o War. It's Man o War. I believe you're right on that, Matt. But I do know for a fact Man o War grandsired Secretariat. Mm. Good good genes. Good genes. Good horse genes. Oscar Minor winner. This composer has been nominated for 22 Oscars, but has only won two winning the Oscar for Best Original Song for a 2001 Disney movie, 2011 Disney movie. Shocked to find out he didn't win an Oscar for the 95 Disney movie. Voters must have been Uncultured Swine. Who's the composer? Uh, We just took a stab with a very famous Disney composer. We said Alan Menken. Uh, We wagered 20 on this, and if we're right, then Ryan, you got a friend in me because we said Randy Newman. And it is Randy Newman. No way. But people get to. That's what I said. He 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 didn't. Uh, the person the the song that won, then yeah, the year he <laughs> probably could have won for "You've Got a Friend in Me" was actually "Colors of the, of the Wind." Oh, from that Pocahontas. Was, that was Alan Menken. That's it's a great the jungle song. out there. <laughs> Randy Newman didn't get uh his Oscar until Monsters Inc. Can we get Randy Newman to do the rules read? <laughs> that would be great. Up the game is simple. <laughs> I mean, you could just do it. That's <laughs> save ourselves a couple hundred bucks Point on question. cameo. Oh, okay. Uh, Joe questions got no answers. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this for? <laughs> Us. <laughs> I'm really glad I brought Randy Newman. To All this right, number enough. four. <laughs> Uh, second number one for two. Uh, Jason Derulo and Josh 685 released a song in 2020. It was released by BTS. The remix made it to number one on the Billboard Top 100, making it the second number one hit for BTS and Jason Derulo. Name that song. That's a lot of stuff I don't understand, so I pass it to Jeff. I think it's Savage points. Love. 30 points for Savage Love. Wow. Oh, we, we wager 20. Um, not big BTS guys over here, apparently. Uh, we just said Butter. I know it's a song by them. Big Derulo fan. Oh. And uh, it's Savage Love. Wow. Yeah. Good job, Jeff. <laughs> when uh, I was writing this question, I uh, got into a debate with my friends about if Jason Derulo and DJ Khaled wrote a song together, whose name would you hear first? <laughs> oh, the, it would just, the universe would implode. That's the consequence of such a horrible song. I came to the conclusion that you'd hear DJ from DJ Khaled, but as soon as you hear the J, you get Jason Derulo. Mm-hmm. So you get D- Jason Derulo. Oh, I like that. And you just never hear Khaled, so you don't know who's the DJ. Another one, they'd say. And we want another one. Let's go to number five. Uh, a theme is a twist your host makes. What was the theme of the quiz? Five points for each group of five and ten points for the overall theme. Well, we stared at all the answers, and uh, our eyes crossed, and we just could not do it. So we tapped out, but uh, we heard you guys talking, and now we feel a little dumb. Yes, Vanity, thy name is Matt. We figured it out. Uh, The first five are all Neils. You got your Neil Diamonds, your Neil Youngs, your Neil Armstrongs. 
etc. Number two's block were all Matt's, Matt LeBlanc, Matt Hardy, Matt other people. Matt Damon, I believe, is involved. Uh, for block three, we had Ken's, including Ken Jennings and the rest. And Jeff Bridges is all as far as we got. We figured it out. They're triviality hosts. Give us our points. You skipped uh, yeah. Neil Flynn and Matt Smith. How yeah, dare you? I apologize. Yeah. Uh, I'll go over some of these uh, less known here. Neil, Muc- Neil Buchanan is the host of a show called Art Attack that was on for like 17 years. That okay. might be a little, uh, I don't know. It was my entire childhood. Okay. <laughs> it was a it was along for a while. But uh Ken Jennings, obviously Jeopardy Leonard. Uh Ken Shamrock was the wrestler. Ken Masters is a street fight character. Ken Burns, documentary director. And Ken Anderson was Mr. Kennedy. I got a few wrestlers on here. Yeah, actually there's quite a few, yeah. Uh the Mats, Matt LeBlanc, Matt Smith, Matt Hardy, the wrestler, Matt Damon, Matt Stone, South Park creator. And the Jeffs, you got Jeff Kent. Baseball player, Blue Jays legend, not really, Giants legend. Uh, Jeff Daniels, Jeff Hardy, so I got both the Hardys. Uh, Jeff Bridges and Jeff Gordon. Great poll on that one, guys. So you get 30 points. We don't lose any on that one. So we earned 30 points in the final round. Yeah, you're going to bring your total to uh, 200 for today, but uh, picking up a total of 80 extra points in the final round, no! bringing their total to 250, is the Kiwi Sports, today's cream of the crop. The cream will rise to the top. Oh, yeah. Cue Yay. the Wii Sports victory sound. I can't believe you, <laughs> can't believe you teamed up with Ryan and revenged us. Yes, you just got revenged. Ryan, great effort today. Thank uh, you. Hope you had fun. Any uh, final shout-outs for you? Oh, no, just um, thanks so much for having me, guys. Um, I thank my wife for looking after the baby while I'm doing this, but she's not going to listen to it anyway. Um, <laughs> I know the feeling. Matt doesn't listen to the show either. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, thank you so much for your support and for joining us today. And, uh, Mike, great, great game. Thanks. Uh, worked hard on it. <laughs> Oh, well, it shows. And uh, any last shout outs for you? I'd like to shout out to uh, anyone who doesn't know the opposite of it is. Um, but for <laughs> real, uh, I'd like to give a shout out to everyone who uh, t- uh, play tested this, be it the uh, people in the Triviality Discord and uh, my uh, parents and my sister, who on a three hour road trip, I forced them to play test. We love the play testers <laughs> and mm-hmm. uh, your family. Um, th- well, that'll do it for the show today. That'll do it. Uh, Thank you, everyone, for listening. Make sure to rate and review and subscribe. It'll help us uh, continue to grow. For Matt, Ken, Jeff, Ryan, and Mike, my name is Neil, and that was Triviality. Yeah, regular names. (laughs) Yeah. That's what I was thinking, like, maybe not Pinocchio or Geppetto, but they have names. Yeah. What are these people with names? And they're Italian. Yeah. Eugene doesn't sound Eugene Italian. Eugene, if you're Herbert. <laughs> <laughs> Japan, no, why don't you change your name to Eugene? <laughs> why are you not talking with your accent anymore?